Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Welcome to part two of working on my Vietnam style ficus microcarpa. In part one of this series, I worked on the top of the tree, getting all the branches and the branch structure sorted out, thinning it out, pruning it back, and getting the top in shape. I mentioned in part one of this series that I, I like to take a picture of the tree and then I look at the picture and I see what gives away the size of the tree. Um, what makes this look like a miniature tree rather than a giant ficus. So I kind of analyze it and I think in this one the roots are letting the tree down. I've got all these thick kind of roots that run down and I think it needs a finer root system. I do have some nice finer aerial roots coming out of the tree, which look really good. But I think the basic, you know, these big thick ginseng type roots are kind of giving away the scale and size of the actual tree. So in this series, I'm going to do some root carving. I didn't have a gouge that was fine enough to carve all the little detail work I want to do on the roots. So I went out and I bought some scalpel handles and some scalpel blades so I can do some really detailed root surgery. I'm going to start the work on the roots now. I'll just rotate it around. We'll start with this easy one up front here. You can see how the root starts kind of thin at the top and sort of gets wider to the base. So I'll need to cut a V-shaped section out of here wider at the base and narrower at the top, dividing this big thick root section into two. And I'm wondering, should I go three there maybe? I could try for three. I mentioned that I'd be trying a new technique with this root carving today. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut my sections out of the root and then I'm going to wrap it in sphagnum moss and keep it moist and I'm hoping from all the cut points around the roots that I'll get new finer roots growing and that'll give me an even better root system. I, I think it'll you know really make this tree look miniature. That's what I'm after. I don't know which one I'll like better so I, I bought one of each. They weren't very much money. I think this one has a price tag on it. That was $2.49 and this was $2.49 also. So yeah I got both of them so I can try them out and see which one I like better. I also have two different kinds of blades for them. I'll get my scalpels assembled, then we'll come back for the actual root surgery. Here's a look at the two scalpels. I think I'm going to choose the small one for this because it is a small tree. I think I will divide this thick root up into three smaller roots. I think the finer they are, the more miniature the tree will look. So I'll rough it in. So I've got kind of a, I don't know what that is. A weird kind of chunk taken out of there. So this is my live vein. So I think I want to start one of them about here. Coming down here. Now I can only carve away to the soil line. So when I repot this, I'll have to take off. I'll have to continue the groove down into the below the soil line. So I'm cutting my first groove here. You can see it's starting to, starting to get a bit of sap coming out. The scalpel is very sharp. So you have to go deep enough um, to get down to the woody part of the root. So you take all the, I don't know if it's a cambium layer or whatever, it's the equivalent of a cambium layer on the root. So you've got to remove that. So I'm kind of carving a V section now. And I actually have a tool for removing this, but the scalpel seems to be working quite well. There we go. There's our first groove carved. Now I'll just try and, there, it's off. So now the root divides from one into two, and then I want to divide this one into two also. So another groove will be carved. And this will have to be very thin. I 
I think the scalpel is the perfect tool for this. It's very precise, sharp, sterilized. There's piece number two up. So now you can see this root divides from one into three sections. And these sections, they look flat right now, but the living part swells up. I don't know if you can see it too well, but it does. It swells up at the edges and becomes sort of like a round root eventually. Now I'm going to carve these a little deeper. I mean, they're not bad, but they're down to the wood, that's for sure. But I think I'll just go a little deeper. Boy, the scalpel is so sharp. It just cuts through this wood like butter. A bit of root came off of that one. Okay, that one's certainly deep enough. Now I carve this one out a little deeper. Here it comes. Okay, so that's plenty deep enough. So that one is finished, that root. Other than I could carve this a little better. I don't know what happened here. Maybe there was a another root coming out of here that I removed or maybe even a branch. But I could clean this edge up a bit here, I will. Like that, that flows really nicely now. Yes, I'm quite pleased with that. Just cleaning up this edge a bit here too. So this is just wood I'm carving away here. And the actual living tissue starts right about here. So I'm hoping I get new roots kind of grow in these grooves with the addition of that sphagnum moss. Because if I can cover this root base with, you know, fine roots, I think it would really look good. There's a close up look at the root that I carved. I think it looks really good. It's really gonna improve the look of this tree. The next root I'm going to look at is this one here. So I've already divided into two down lower here. I think I could extend that groove up higher and maybe thin them out a bit, putting in kind of a wider groove between them. I think that'll look really good. I'm going to start by extending this existing cut up higher in the root base. And I think I have enough material here that I may even divide this section into two also. So here I go. I'll start with the this groove coming up here. And I think I want to start it fairly high, maybe even right up here, yeah. So you have to be careful not to cut your roots in the wrong place or like if, you're, if you were to accidentally cut across the living section, you basically kill the root below it. So you gotta go with the directional flow of the root. So that is looking good. Okay, I think that should come free. That section of root. There it comes. I can pull that out now. Like that. Perfect. So I, I definitely have enough room to divide that into two. So here I go. Now, I don't know if I want to start it up higher. I'm thinking down here where it gets wider. I, I, I think that's what I'll do. So here I go. OK, 
Okay, I think that should come out now. There it goes. That just popped out. Make sure I get it right down here. There. Get my tweezers. in the way. Sorry about that. Sometimes I concentrate so much on the tree that I forget I'm making a video. Like right now I just forgot. Okay. So I think that's successful. I've got this root now divided into three sections. Very exciting. So next is this large one off to the side. You can see I've got one section here, another section here, and there's a third section over here, but an aerial root groove or top of it, which is good. So I think I just need to carve this one a little bit, make it thinner, and carve that one into two. So here I go. Now, I've got to get in here. So I'm going to start it up quite high, out up here. I'm going to run it down to about there. I've got to come in here. So these grooves have to get a little wider as they go down. You can see the slices come away there. I think I should remove that. And I can see what I'm doing. So I need to open it up at the bottom here more. Which isn't easy to get in there, but I can do it. Okay, that's turning out pretty good. So there, there you can see that groove now. It's not perfect, I just gotta clean up the edge here a bit. Well, that looks pretty good, I like that. Divided that up nicely. Now I've gotta dress this one. You can see how thick it is here. So, I've got a root growing there. I think what I want is to I'll divide that into two. So here I go. Sorry, my hand's in the way again. Always have my hand in the way. Yeah, that looks quite nice. I'll just carve it a little deeper in this section. Sorry. section out now there okay that's looking really good I think very very nice you can see there's even an aerial root coming out here I'll show you a close-up of that here's a close-up of the area I just carved the section in here the section here and there's that aerial root coming out right there nice to see I've got the root carving completed at the front of the tree, so now I'm going to continue all the way around. All right, let's rotate it around. Ah, so here's one here that needs dividing and also the one at the back. You can see how thick that one is. All right, so I, I'm going to divide this section into, into two. So I'll start a groove here. Bit of a tricky cut, it kind of spirals around a bit. Ah, nice. I'm a root surgeon. Now 
Now be extremely careful with these scalpels if you use them. They are extremely sharp. But if you're careful, they're quite safe to use. Just never put your finger in the way of the blade. Ever. <laughs> or it might be the last time you ever do that. Okay, I can peel away this groove now. Nice, so oh, that came out really good. So I can pull this away a bit at the bottom here. So it continues down into the root base. And then I'll just have to cut it. And when I go to repot it, I can open those up a little more down below. So that should work out quite well. That's a nice groove there. Now, the big one here. So let's look at that. So it's kind of rectangular here in this section, which doesn't look good at all. I need to carve away a bit of this section on the side to make it more tapered like a root. So I'll start there. I'll start taking some material off the side here. I filled the card on the camera, so I'm not sure exactly what I missed, if anything. So I'm working on carving the grooves on this back root. So I'm dividing this section into two and then I'll divide it into three or maybe more down lower. So I'm just working on getting out this middle section here. So I'll get out the tweezers. Just pull it down like that. So that's looking good. I just have to continue it down the bottom here. Like that. Nice. So I think it's good up top. I could, uh, no, I, I think that's good. Now I've got to divide it here. So I think, you know, I can do quite a few grooves down here. So I'm going to start right here. Just following the, the line of the, the grain of the root, I guess, or along the grain of the root. And it doesn't matter, you can go quite deep cutting into the root, it doesn't matter. You're just going into the wood. As long as you get through that outer living layer, you're fine. Okay, let's get this peeled back now. Come on. Like that. So there's, you know, one groove now. I can carve another one here. And this technique is a typical technique they use in the tropical climates to work on ficus roots. Uh, yeah, this is a common technique on ficus. Okay, so that one's coming away like that. Looking good. So we're dividing into one, two, three, four now. I'm going to divide it into five up here. Another, because you can see this part of the root from the front, so. Okay, that's looking good. That divides one, two, three, four, five. And I could even divide this more at the back here. Definitely could, like this cut kind of closes up here. That could be opened up. I think I'll start with one here. That's pretty good. That makes a nice narrow root there. You don't want them all exactly the same. Otherwise it'll look a bit artificial. So it's nice to get some variation in your the size of your grooves and all that.
There it comes. Nice, that looks really good. I'll get you a close up of that. There's a look at that root. Next, I have a bulbous section here without any division, so I need to carve that up. So, I'll start here. The white sap actually helps you see where you've cut when it oozes out a bit. You can kind of see, see your lines. Otherwise, it's really hard to see them. Okay, I think, I think that's good if I can get this section out now. There it goes. There. That looks quite good. Now, I can't get in here. It's hidden by these roots. And if I put sphagnum moss in there, I'll get all kinds of new roots probably grow in this area. So it'll cover that up. Then I'm going around. I think all this section is good. And we're back to the front. So I think, I think that's it for the root carving. Here's a look at the root carving from the front. And you might say, well, it doesn't look very good. It looks like someone carved a bunch of grooves in the roots. And that's true at the present moment. But what will happen in the years ahead is those individual veins, living veins of the roots will swell up and become rounder. And they'll actually take on the form of, you know, a normal ficus root, just thinner. It's a technique that, you know, you do it now and then you don't see the the good results until two, maybe three, maybe even four, five years down the road when those roots start swelling up and become more rounded. I think even with them the way they are now, the tree looks more miniature. It doesn't have those really kind of coarse looking roots on it. It breaks it up quite a bit. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put sphagnum moss around all those, those roots, hoping to get more fine roots growing from all those cut points and really, really get a miniature root system, hopefully by the end of winter. I've got a nice bag of sphagnum moss that Tom from the YouTube channel, Grow and Clip Bonsai for Senior sent to me. Thanks, Tom. So the sphagnum moss, you should always use a dust mask when you're handling it. There's some kind of, uh, I don't know if it's a bacteria, I guess it's some kind of bacteria or fungus or something that lives in this moss that's not good for your lungs. So always wear a mask when you're handling this. Once it's wet, I think it's okay. You just don't want that dust in your lungs. So I'll get a mask and we'll wet some of this moss down. I've got my mask on. So I'll open up the sphagnum moss. So I'll reach in and I'll pull out a chunk. There we go, it's long fibered sphagnum moss, and I'll soak it in the water. This is rainwater. It doesn't look like rainwater because of all the leaves on the roof of the plant room, they stain it kind of a dark amber color. But it is rainwater, it's from the cube. So I don't know how much of this I'll need. I think it expands too. I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting darker and darker out. I keep having to bump the ISO up on the camera to compensate. I think I'll just have enough time to get the sphagnum moss around the root system and that'll probably be it for today. All right, here I go with the sphagnum moss. So I just want to put it around my cut points, around the roots here. So the tree will look a bit of a mess for a while, but it'll hold the moisture in against the roots. And I should get some nice roots developing along the trunk. Because, you know, ideally, if I could replace all the roots with little fine ones, that would be the perfect scenario. I'll even put some sphagnum moss in some of these cavities of the aerial roots that exist already to try and fill in those spaces with roots. You never know, roots might grow in there. I'm out back now. So here's a cavity in here I could fill with sphagnum moss. Now you could 
cover the sphagnum moss with plastic, kind of like an air layer. Uh, but the plant room is humid enough, and I'll keep misting it, that I won't need to do that. It'll hold its moisture. I won't let it dry out. So I need some around here on these roots. Some on top of here. Covering up all my work, but it will all be revealed someday and hopefully this works. I'm hoping it does. If it doesn't, well, at least I have the grooves carved in and I can try something else. So this sphagnum moss, I'm pretty sure you can buy it online too if you can't find it in your local area. Some of the greenhouses carry it. Um, maybe even some of the big box stores would have some sphagnum moss in their gardening section. Because, you know, it's used a lot in, you know, by florists decorating uh, the bottom of pots and stuff. You even see it spray painted green sometimes. I don't know if that stuff's very good to use, but live sphagnum moss is the best, definitely, but it's the winter time here, <laughs> and I don't know where I'd go out and collect live sphagnum moss. Okay, I think I've got it all covered up now. So I'll keep this really well misted, keep it warm and humid, the tree. Hopefully, I'll get all kinds of new fine roots growing in between all those grooves I carved and we'll get a really cool root system on this tree. Here's a final close-up look at my tree. You can see how high it is. It's about a hand and a half high. A tiny tree, but a hopefully it'll look like a giant tree someday. That is all the work I'll be doing on my Vietnam style ficus microcarpa. That ends part two of this series and it ends the series also. I'll be sure to give you updates on the tree into the far future. That's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the Bonsai Zone. Mm -hmm.